So you can see the grid then here at the Manufacturer Series for the final. You can see Mercedes-Benz there in third position with Ed Williams, who will be the starting driver at the wheel. Chevrolet with Kim Long Lee, the driver from Hong Kong in the Corvette. Then we have the third row of the grid, Aston Martin with Angelo Schut at the wheel to start. And alongside him, it's Yamanaka in the Toyota GR Supra racing concept machine. Healy is behind the wheel of the Hyundai in seventh position. And alongside him, it's Leach in the Jaguar F-Type Group 3 machine. Heading further back down the grid, we have Adrian Carazza in the Porsche. He'll want to be doing good things on the manufacturer's home turf. Ahead of Cortina, also on the manufacturer's home turf for Volkswagen here. Ford with Danny Solis at the wheel, the American driver and the American machine. And alongside him, it is the Lexus. They start down in plum last position. Let's not forget after their disappointment in that last race that we just had. So you see there and the tyres being selected by our guys in the car. Lexus going full attack. They're going to try and get as many positions as possible on that first lap. Now with this new rolling start procedure, the cars are a lot closer together, which means that while we usually see a procession down at T1, this time it's going to be a battle down into T1. Now, we're using the Group 3 cars here today, very similar to the top class being raced here at the Nürburgring 24 hours. And you can see that Volkenhaus car actually being driven by our very own Lucas Ordonez in real life. Yeah, really excited to see how Lucas will get on in the uh, 24 hour race that will be taking place here. You can see fully fledged race cars equivalent to the FIA's GT3 class, wider bodies, uh, bodies and aerodynamic improvements. But the focus, though, is on the start of the race. BMW on home soil here at the Nürburgring lead the way as we get ready to get it underway. The 2019 World Tour 2 Grand Final for the Manufacturer Series is underway as we head down towards the first corner at the Nordschleife here. Who will get the lead? Will we see any changes in position? Mercedes uh, looking pretty menacing there in third place. And also, you can see Audi going towards the outside. Mercedes on the inside as BMW try to defend their lead in towards turn number two. Keep it nice and clean here. Lads as Chevrolet getting very close. And also Aston Martin there on the oh inside. My. And BMW get tagged by Audi and lose their race lead on the opening lap. And a penalty there for BMW. I think for going off the, off the track, maybe going because it does a corner cut there, but a disastrous start there for BMW. Uh, Audi for now taking the lead, Aston Martin second, Chevrolet up into fourth position in the background, and this is Manic. And now this is what you're going to be doing. You want to be trying to get yourself into a position that you want to be in going into the Northern Loop. It's very hard to overtake once you're off the GP circuit, so everyone now frantically trying to get by the guy in front of Toyota there, uh, pretty much pushing the BMW along. But that fight, that 0.5 of a second penalty will not be served until we're Right away, uh, right away the round, sorry. The rest of the lap on the start of the dot and Jeho and BMW a little bit wide there coming out of Schumacher S. Door to door contact between them and Toyota. Toyota looking to the outside. BMW with the right line on the inside though and maintain their third position. Well, that is a disappointing race start there for BMW. They are down in third position and with that half a second penalty there, as Jimmy said, for corner cutting. Been a disappointing start here also for Mercedes Benz. They were challenging potentially for second position down to the first corner and they now find themselves on this first lap down in sixth position after the space of only a few kilometers of this uh, Nordschleife circuit. Now on to the Northern Loop, the 24 hour uh, layout circuit begins as they go through the left-hander uh, for the first time out of five of asking and this is where we should be expecting the soft tires to come into play very nicely here Jimmy the likes of Toyota who are on the soft tires they're going to be wanting to make very good progress in the opening stages here but unlike uh, or like, very much like I should say Lexus the sister manufacturer to Toyota they've not made any ground at all off of the start tell you what Tommy Yamanaka and soft tires name a more iconic duo <laughs> he is going to be absolutely uh, sending that car at every opportunity. We know how aggressive that Japanese driver is. Uh, the Italian commentators, as I've said before, refer to him as the Samurai. So let's see what he can do here today at the Nordschleife. He is now deep in the slipstream of the BMW. He might have a look up the inside here in the fast right hander. Coming up the Flugplatz now. You see full throttle there, looks to the inside. He thought about it, didn't he? I think he thought better of it at the last second. He's now going to try and maybe get the toe down the hill and try something at Dirlenberg. Through the left hander they go then over the brow of the hill and this is such a quick part of the lap isn't it it's so much one at a time through here because you've got to slam it on the anchors in a very uh, few moments time as you go through the left hander kink then into the very very slow right hander by comparison to that left hander kink that precedes it 
down into the right hander they go. No changes in position thus far. And these medium compound of tyres seem to be working for the top three manufacturers of Audi, Aston Martin and BMW so far. Toyota not able to mount any charges, not able to find their way past. Lexus, meanwhile, a bit of a different story. They have managed to get the better of Jaguar and Ford. Yeah, Lexus making up a couple of places down the bottom of the field too. And the thing is, Toyota and Lexus both need to be making the most of those soft tyres. They're only going to have a lap, maybe two at the most on them if they really push the tyre. Uh, but if you're spending all that time behind someone slower, you're just wasting that tyre compound. So uh, we'll have to see if Yamanaka can do anything with the soft tyres on that Toyota. Meanwhile, it's Audi leading, uh, coming now into the middle sector. Very easy to go wide to this corner and dip a wheel on the grass, and we saw a little bit in qualifying earlier on, but everyone getting through there in one piece this time, gladly, I, I could say. And of course, what Yamanaka's probably thinking now is, OK, right, the guy in front's got a 0.5 second penalty. I can pass him easy coming onto the back straight as long as I'm close to him. Yeah, absolutely right, as you say there, Jimmy, and we know how fast that Toyota is in a straight line there, regardless. Looking at Audi, the race leaders, who are coming under ever more pressure from the Aston Martin team at the moment. Just to remind you, the uh, Aston Martin in this first phase of the final is being driven by Angelo Schutt. Meanwhile, on board the Audi, or driving the Audi, I should say, at the moment, is actually Martin Grady, who uh, is doing a good job. This is the first time he's led a race in the uh, World Tour for quite a significant amount of time, and good to see him fighting and also holding his own in the Manufacturer Series at the front of things stand. A little bit wide there for BMW. Is that going to allow an opportunity for Toyota? Again, still too much of one time through here as we get ready to come uh, in towards the right-hander. You heard the team radio with Martin Grady earlier saying, I'm not having that. I'm not having that. <laughs> and this is him trying to now repay, I think, the, uh, the unfortunate circumstances of the race he was in earlier on. Now, Aston Martin, we know this car has an absolute beast of an engine underneath that bonnet. V12, look at the straight line speed. Martin Grady can do nothing but sit there and watch Aston Martin just pull by, but now he'll dip into the toe. And in the background as well, we have Toyota and BMW going out. Toyota looking to the outside, now on the inside. If he can stay there, that's position made. He's made a pass going up the hill. There goes Toyota up into third position, which is very important because he's on the soft compound attire coming into now what is probably the most important for handling part of this circuit. Lexus have made really good ground actually on this opening lap here. Jimmy, they're now up into ninth position ahead of Volkswagen and looking to try and challenge Porsche in eighth place there as well. But as you say, crucial really for Toyota in these opening stages. They needed to try and make the pass. They needed to try and get themselves into clear air as soon as they can because those soft tyres are going to be absolutely toast by the end of this first lap. And this is where it gets... Gap. Yeah, you can see a huge gap has actually broken out from sixth position down to seventh place there. But uh, it, this is where it really counts. Another penalty there for Ford as well. Half second penalty presumably for uh, corner cutting. But this is the thing that's so unique about the manufacturer series is of course that we do have these driver changes and we do have these differences in strategies here. So you can bet your bottom dollar that Toyota will be pitting at the end of this first lap and getting a different driver in their car. But you can see that uh, Yamanaka <laughs> is doing a really very, very impressive job behind the wheel of that uh, Group 3 machine as we ride on board with the Japanese driver in the Japanese mark now through the right-hander, oh. very close to the Audi there. Was there a little bit of contact? It was quite close, just a touch, I think. But you can see him there looking very aggressive as he's just got so much more pace but just know where to use it at the moment, really, more than anything. He's looking everywhere at the moment to try and get by that Audi in front. And this is it, this is the frustration. When you're on the faster tyre, there isn't really just a place to pass around here. You're just stuck on the rear wing and the guy in front saying, come on, get on with it, I can go faster than you. But of course, it's everyone for themselves right now. And Yamanaka, unfortunately, burning up that soft compound tyre. However, Aston Martin at the moment starting to pull a bit of a gap at the moment. So our champions from last time out, currently it's uh, Angelo Schutt in the wheel there. He was actually present here at our first ever World Tour event last year. So great to see him back. And not only that, leading in Aston Martin. A little bit of a moment there for Toyota, actually. Jimmy as well going through that right hand. The car just got a little bit more unsettled. I tell you what, we're about to come on to the dotting of her for the first time of asking. And that is where it's really going to hurt BMW because, uh, well, that is where they've got that half-second penalty, and that is where they will serve it on that straight. It's only half a second, but when you're in such close contention with the cars uh, behind you, in this case it is Mercedes-Benz, a bit of a gap actually breaking out now from the top five to Chevrolet in sixth position there as well. And look at the lead that Aston Martin have been able to get on this opening lap here. So if things finished as they were at this second, Toyota would be your champions of the weekend, but uh, Mercedes-Benz there very close. Look how close it would be if that happened. My word. 
very close indeed. And I tell you what, that would be very, very disappointing for Lexus. Look at the straight line speed as Mercedes-Benz go romping past the course with the result of that penalty as well. And, uh, well, Aston Martin were are leading the way now, so there was obviously an instant there for Audi. And now Toyota are up into second position ahead of the German manufacturer as well. So it's Aston Martin from Toyota, from Audi, but for how long? Because you can guarantee that Martin Grady, who is behind the wheel of that R8 at the moment, is going to try and find his way past that Toyota with every way that he can. But he shouldn't need to worry, really, because, of course, Toyota will be pitting at the end of this lap. Now, our predictions are usually, uh, usually uh, what is a guess from us? They're not always correct. So let's see what Yamanaka does. Will he veer to the right-hand side and pit in? No. He's going to try and make that soft tyre last two laps. He's so a braver man than you or I, I think. Well, I mean, I would have crashed by now, so that doesn't matter. <laughs> um, but Yamanaka out there, we know that if, uh, if there's a skilled driver who is soft in the tyres, they can make those soft tyres last. We're getting a lot of people coming into the pit lane, though, from the hard tyre. OK, so this is an interesting strategy. People are opting to get off that hard tyre as quick as possible and get onto the medium or soft. It looks like what people are going to be trying to do is two laps in the medium, two laps in the soft, get that hard out of the way so you haven't got to worry about it. But of course, if you're on the medium or soft now, that hard tyre is still yet to come. And we think that's about 12 seconds a lap slower yeah, than well, the soft tyres. So. Completely understandable, isn't it? You want to do as short a stint as possible over the course of the race on that uh, hard tyre. And if you can make those mediums, you can stretch the distance and uh, try and crawl round on the softer tyres uh, towards the end of this race when they're going to be a bit second-hand, let's be honest, then that is probably probably the best uh, strategy to call, or maybe it won't be. Let's wait and see what the other drivers decide to pull. Either way, all drivers now out on track are either on the medium or the softer compound of tyres. The uh, four manufacturers towards the back of the grid, Porsche, Hyundai, Toy Jaguar and Ford, have now all hitted. You can see Aston Martin versus Toyota. It's getting pretty close here as well. What Yamanaka is trying to do is get ahead of Aston Martin before getting on to the Nord Slifer proper. At this point, it's not looking like it's going to happen. It's a fast chicane coming up, and it's not really an overtaking spot, but we've seen people send it on the corner after that. He's looking up the inside. He's letting the Aston Martin driver know, hi, I'm in your mirrors. Look at me. Don't look in front. But the thing is now, if Yamanaka can get by, uh, get by Aston Martin and then send it through the Nordschleife, he can probably end up with a decent lead. But, of course, he is on older tyres, and those soft tyres are only going to fall away from him now. Well, let's see what will happen. It's going to be very, very exciting indeed and very unpredictable. We just saw on the left-hand side of your screen, Angelo Schutt, the driver who is leading the way. This is the live points ranking on the right-hand side of your screen there as well. At the moment, as things stand, it would be Toyota who claimed victory in the Manufacturer Series here tonight. Given the dominant performance we saw with Lexus in the first two races, I could not have predicted that in any way, shape or form. As it stands, Lexus would finish down in fourth position, but still a long way to go in this race. We're only on lap two out of five here at the Nordschleifer. As we come over the brow of the hill in towards this uh, flag foot section in a few moments' time, let's see whether Toyota are going to be able to do anything because it's just so close, isn't it? And it's just so much one at a time through here. There's no move room to try and move, even if you've got a pace advantage. And speaking of a pace advantage, Mercedes-Benz are looking very much quicker than their uh, compatriots of Audi as things stand. And here comes Toyota trying to find their way through against Aston Martin. And Yamanaka does find his way through against Angelo Schutz and the Aston Martin and into the race lead. That was a great move there from the Japanese driver. And that is exactly what he needed to do to get clear track out in front and hold up that Aston Martin whilst he's on those softer compound of tyres. He just carried the speed there. I think he kind of uh, felt that out on the lap before when he was following the other cars down the hill and said, yeah, I can do that. So now he's passed. Now this is absolutely Absolutely crucial for Yamanaka in that Toyota. He needs to get as big a gap as he can now on that soft compound of tyre. He does have an advantage on the tyre in terms of the, uh, the peak grip, but at this point, the soft compound of tyres are going to be quite worn and is maybe struggling in some of the slower corners, but already filling out a gap to Aston Martin and Angelo, Angelo shoot there. So maybe this is a master stroke from Toyota. We'll have to wait and see. So, plenty of time for silver things to change. Look at this great little battle going on for third position between Audi, Mercedes-Benz and also BMW there as well. BMW, of course, don't forget, they were on pole position going into this race, so it's not been an opening lap and a half for them to remember so far, but still plenty of time for things to change, still plenty of unpredictability, I'm sure, involved, and, of course, the difference in strategy that we could potentially be set to see there as well. So Mercedes-Benz still leading that charge, holding on to that final podium position, be interested to see whether these guys do decide to pit at the end of this lap on the medium compound of tyres or whether they'll try and go another lap. Because, of course, don't forget, they've got to have three driver changes and three different compounds of tyres. All of them have got to be used. 
the idea, I think, is to, um, again, get off a slower tyre, as I said earlier, as soon as possible, which a lot of drivers have already done, and uh, perhaps get the driver who maybe is struggling to pace out the car out as quick as you can. It's quite a hard decision to have, uh, quite a hard discussion to have, sorry, of someone saying, right, OK, who's faster, who's slower, because, of course, a lot of these guys are very competitive, but that's what makes a good team play, to say, you know, listen, I'm struggling a bit round here, I'll do the one lap and get out. Um, that can be just as valuable in some circumstances as the guy is going out there and hot lapping. But you're seeing now, we've got picture in picture. There Yamanaka. is Yamanaka looking very focused. Uh, very interesting driving style from Yamanaka. You're going to see he makes a lot of very micro movements, a lot of little mini uh, corrections there. Meanwhile, in the background, Mercedes Benz trying a lot on Audi. The Audi struggling a bit in the straight line, it seems. And Mercedes Benz uh, just rings it around the outside. Thank you very much. Is the BMW going to try and do the same? I don't think he's got enough room to do that. But now Audi's in the toe as well, so he might try and come back at him coming into his fast left hander. Dives to the outside, then to the inside, but it's just very much one of the rest through here. So Audi down to fourth. So then. Exciting racing taking place. BMW looking pretty menacing here as well. They're trying for the inside line. They're trying to take a different bit, part of the track to Audi to put their car in such a position to try and muscle their way past. They're not quite close enough at this stage. They're coming in towards the uh, carousel for the second time of asking. And this surely at the end of this lap is where we're going to see those pit stops uh, start taking place. You can see the Mercedes Benz there in third position, just pulling out a couple of car lengths here to Audi as they get a little bit sideways, a bit squirrely coming out of the carousel section. And will that allow BMW? to try and launch a move perhaps in towards this next sector of the lap. Now, it's worth noting that we uh, actually have the driver's schedule here in front of us right now. So right now in the BMW, we've had no driver swap as of yet. So that is Aguila in the car at the moment. And he's going to be uh, then uh, switching over to Randall Haywood. He gave us that fantastic overtake we saw earlier on at Monza around the outside of the T1. And then he'll be passing over to Tapai as well. So um, that very much, that was decided before the race got on, as well as probably tyre strategy. You can see how much Martin Grady is struggling now. The tyre wear on that mid-engine Audi, I think really now coming back to bite the British driver. The rear end of that thing, it looks like he wants to try and escape at every possible opportunity, doesn't it? Yeah, just riding on board with Raul Aguila there, who is in the BMW behind, the leading driver for that team at the moment. And, uh, well, he is looking pretty calm and pretty confident. All of these uh, three cars that were battling for third position that's now essentially become a two-way battle for fourth place are on the medium compound of tyres different tyre compounds though for Toyota versus Aston Martin Toyota on the softer compound of tyres and let's not forget of course they are going to be looking very very second hand at the moment it's important to note that uh, Toyota have not really pulled away from um, Aston Martin the gap is still hovering around half a second the thing is as soon as there's a straight Aston Martin it's like movie 12 and just goes <laughs> flying and then that's it uh, catches back up again to Toyota, which uh, relatively is uh, better in the corners, not quite as quick on the straight lines. But uh, you see Mercedes now, after getting by the Audi, is putting away uh, quite a big gap there. So I think very much Grady being the cork in the bottle uh, in the midfield at the moment, but still holding on to fourth place. Of course, coming on now to the incredibly long back straight here. I think it's uh, somewhere uh, quite far over a kilometre, this straight here. So very easy to get into the, the toe and slipstream somebody. Uh, as we're probably going to see right now. No penalty for the BMW driver this time. And you see now, uh, I think that is Kevlum coming up there behind uh, Yamanaka, getting ready to jump into that Toyota at the next uh, pit stop. And there goes Aston Martin. Look at the straight line speed there. Yeah, you're absolutely, absolutely right. Absolutely crazy. As you said, my V12, and he's <laughs> straight past. Toyota, the good saving grace for them is they have the slipstream to try and not lose too much time and allow Mercedes-Benz versus BMW to close up. Meanwhile, BMW versus uh, Audi are still going side by side down the straight. Driver changes ready to take place as we can see here. Lots of uh, drivers getting ready to jump into their respective cars. Volkswagen, I can see. Also Corvette looking ready to change. Pretty much everybody on the uh, stage at the moment is ready to change. So let's see who will dart into the pit lane. Toyota, of course, do. Aston Martin do. What about Mercedes-Benz, BMW, Audi? Are they going to pop in? Looks like they are. Yep, BMW coming in. And also Aston Martin, Chevrolet there as well. What about Lexus? They haven't pitted. And also Volkswagen. And all the other drivers are... Uh, of course, a little bit further down, have made their first stop in this race so far. So again, tyre strategy there in the bottom left-hand corner. What we expect to see during this race in terms of durability, Yamanaka has already said uh, that our tyre strategy graphic is actually wrong. He did two sets, uh, two laps on the soft tyre. But of course, every tyre must be used in this race. So it's very important to use it at the correct time. Now, Aston Martin come out in the lead as we expected, 
they've opted to use a hard tyre. So what we'll probably see there is Kevlum, he'll, uh, sorry, that was uh, Valverde, no, who is it? Aston Martin driver? It's Boone now that's in the Aston Martin. Uh, Boone, thank you very much, Tom, he can read better than me. He'll be uh, doing the hard tyre, doing one lap, coming back in, then passing over to Mendoza. Yeah, Vu now in the Aston Martin, so he leads the way as things stand. Toyota there in second position, but he's on the harder tyre, though that's not going to be the favourite tyre. Well, we know it's not the favourite tyre at all, based on who has uh, changed compounds over the course of this race there, Jimmy. And, uh, well, it's going to be interesting to see what they're going to be able to do, whether Toyota, with that softer compound of tyre, are going to be able to try and take an advantage. But this could be great here for Aston Martin. If they can hold Toyota there on the hard compound of tyre, and then come back in the pits, and then their last is on a softer compound, that's a great advantage. The thing is, overtaking round here is incredibly difficult once you get off the GP circuit, and we're nearly uh, off it at the moment. So, I mean, realistically, there may be one or two spots you can overtake on the Northern Loop, but, you know, we'll, we'll have to wait and see if that tyre advantage is that strong. So coming up now to the chicane, it's uh, the endurance layout chicane, so a lot more open than the GP chicane, a lot quicker as well. Throw it to the left, throw it to the right. Now, if I was, I'll go right to the inside now. If I was told you, he does get on the curb on the inside. The Aston Martin sees it coming and does not give any room there uh, coming on to the Nordschleife. And that was one of the good overtaking spots, and now that's done. But there, why goes the Aston Martin? But the thing is, the grunt of that thing, you can go wide, get on the power, and get away with it. Yeah, Voon versus the driver, of course, in the Toyota, which is uh, Kevelham at the moment. So Rick Kevelham, the Dutch driver who is behind the wheel of the Japanese Mark, at the moment through the left hander then into the right and you can see the Aston Martin there just getting a little bit wide hasn't got as much grip available to him uh, with this harder compound of tyre underneath him as things stand and will it be a matter of time before these positions change speaking of positions changing actually Porsche have gotten the better of Aston Martin let's not forget though of course Porsche pitted on that first lap of uh, RC, they've changed from the harder compound onto the softer compound of tyre, so they are a little bit out of position as things stand. So, basically, it's a, a, a straight fight between Toyota, Mercedes-Benz and Porsche. Whoever finishes ahead are going to come out as our champions here for the second World Tour in Nürburgring. And here comes Toyota making the same move that Yamanaka made on Aston Martin, and that previous goes round the outside using the softest compound of tyres. A great move there. Uh, by the Toyota driver, hard on the brakes there, sits on the apex, and Toyota up into first position. There you can see Voon looking a bit bewildered, so actually, like, oh, now I do really, really want to let him through. And now it's all on Kevlum. He needs to make as big a gap as possible uh, over the course of this next lap if he has any chance of coming back out in the lead when they pit in next lap. Now, of course, Mercedes-Benz in third position. We have Valverde in the car for them, the Costa Rican touring car driver. What can he do? Can he maybe uh, put up to the back of Aston Martin and try and get through, we'll have to wait and see. Lovely uh, picture in picture we just saw a couple of moments ago, the difference in driving style between the Toyota and uh, the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin far more nervous on those tyres, it has to be said, on that harder compound. And uh, as such, the Toyota looking a little bit more at home on the medium compound, a little more, bit, bit more grip underneath Kevlum at the moment. And uh, you can see that grip is turning into a, a second advantage, so 1.2 seconds it is, and uh, increasing almost corner by corner for the Japanese manufacturers think stand. They're in a very, very positive position here, Jimmy. Very, uh, very positive indeed. It's uh, kind of hard to uh, see what could go wrong for Toyota at this point, though. Saying that, maybe I shouldn't say that as a commentator. <laughs> I think that, Your uh, commentator's curse this weekend has been pretty prevalent, I'll be honest. It's been pretty strong, hasn't it? We'll, uh, we'll ignore it for now, but there's a fight going on for third, fourth and fifth right now. And the important thing to note is Mercedes-Benz, the guy at the head of the train right now, Valverde, as we said before, they are on the harder compound of tyres, which we think is about 14 seconds slower than the tyre that the Porsche is on behind and the BMW. But the BMW picking up another penalty. I think I saw that, Tom. Did you see a penalty in the BMW there? I think you might have been absolutely right there, Jimmy. Let's keep an eye out on uh, things yep. and see whether we can uh, piece together. I think yeah, you're absolutely bob on there. Yeah, half second penalty there for BMW. So the second penalty they've actually been given in this race. Here come Porsche, sliding their way down the inside. Side by side, they run with Mercedes-Benz and through with absolute ease. That was so easy for the uh, Porsche team. I think there that Valverde and the Mercedes-Benz went, you know what, if I have this fight, I'm going to lose some over. I'm on the slower compound of the tyre. Maybe I can get a tyre up the hill here and go a bit quicker and try and follow the Porsche um, for the end of the lap. But, you know, it's, it's very hard to concede that sometimes. But again, just hands more points to uh, Toyota. That, that, that would mean that Porsche would actually move up in to second position overall. No, they'll be there now because they've overtaken Mercedes-Benz. So this is very much a fight for the podium. It certainly is, and it's still going very much on at the moment. Mercedes-Benz 
trying to find their way back past uh, the Porsche at the moment. And all the while, these two are squabbling. It is allowing that BMW, which of course is on the softer compound of tyre, the easily faster compound of tyre, to close up quite significantly. And surely it's only going to be a matter of time before that M6 is going to be finding its way past the AMG and also the 911 as things stand. But still, plenty of time for things to change. Oh, a little bit sideways in the carousel there for Mercedes-Benz. That'll unsettle their drive and it'll allow the BMW to just close up ever so slightly. It's, it's very difficult to, to commentate this race because a five lap race is quite a long race, but it's kind of uh, cut into three mini races with the tyres and how differently they affect the cars around here and how the, the drivers can actually deal with them. You're seeing there the advantage of the soft tyre on that Porsche, able to pull away from Mercedes-Benz like he's standing still for this section. Now, this will be the section where that tyre advantage matters the most for Porsche. But then conversely, BMW there, down in fifth position, they're going to have to just wait. There's nothing they can do apart from sit there, wait for the Mercedes to get on with it. But they're saying that Valverde goes a little bit wide there in the Merc, just picks up a bit of grass. BMW dives to the inside, Valverde off into the wall, into the barrier there. I think he just got onto the dirty stuff up there and Randall Hayward goes through into fourth position. Very impressive stuff there from Randall Hayward, not so impressive stuff uh, sadly from the Mercedes-Benz of Valverde and uh, well a bit more work to do for the AMG driver as things stand and now Lexus are coming back into play now as well. This is the first time really we've mentioned Lexus all race from yes. a team that was so strong, let's be honest, in those first two races. It has really come all undone for them in these last couple, hasn't it? It's not been great for Lexus. I mean, they are still in sixth position. They do need to really get themselves into that top three if there's any chances of coming back from uh, the race earlier. But they're yet to use the hard compound attire. So it's hard to see if it's going to improve at all. Here's so, a replay. So let's see what happens then. Was there any contact between these two drivers, between the Mercedes Benz and between the BMW? Side by side, they go, yeah, just on the dirty stuff, as you say there, but this into the next left hander that follows. There wasn't contact, no, just running too wide. He was offline going into the corner, carrying a bit too much speed, and it was straight into the wall. Just a hard tyre there, trying to make it work on the outside of the track. We just didn't want to know, car went wide. So there is Lexus because we spoke about them and they appear magical, that, isn't it? <laughs> so um, coming on to the back straight now, they'll get a very nice toe down the back straight off the Mercedes-Benz, and that'll be one more lap. Who's in the car for Lexus right now? That's Kawa Kawakami in the car right now uh, for Lexus. Japanese driver, we've seen how quick he can be as well. Meanwhile, the battle for second position is still raging. Aston Martin does have the V12, but Porsche has the toe. Can it, does it have enough grunt to get by though and putting out? No, it doesn't. Look at that Aston Martin there. So I'll tell you what though, Jimmy, Porsche are going to be doing a driver change at the end of this lap, so this is kind of irrelevant really more than anything. He's good straight line speed of Archie Scott, but he does lift off the throttle, duck back into the slipstream, but Porsche, I can see from our commentary position, are going to be having a driver change at the end of this lap. They're on the softer compound of tyre. Let's not forget they pitted on lap one from the hard compound, so they, as we said earlier on, they are slightly out of position. Toyota, though, soldier on on the medium compound of tyre as Aston Martin comes into the pits, gets that softer compound of tyre off. Porsche, as we said, also into the pit lane here as well as uh, Mercedes-Benz are coming in from the harder compound of tyre. What compound are they going to be going on to? BMW uh, have got a penalty once again by the looks of things. Uh, Audi moving up the order as well as Lexus as they don't pit and the rest of the field do pit. Ford also in as well. Just a reminder of the fuel strategy. We expect they're down the bottom left-hand corner. Every team will have to refuel about 25 litres of fuel over the course of this race. And out we go then. So some teams have the last pit stop. There'll be a couple more pit stops on the final lap. But Aston Martin coming out in seventh position now. Mercedes-Benz in sixth, Porsche in fifth. And now a whole host of new drivers and tyres to contend with. So again, Mercedes-Benz, one of the teams who are in with a shout of winning this thing outright, as are Porsche. But they need something special now. They need something special to try and catch up to Toyota now. Bear in mind, Toyota, while they do have a nine second gap right now, they have still to use the hard compound of tyre, which will be on the last lap. And we think that hard compound of tyre is about 14 seconds or so slower, about six seconds slower than the, uh, the medium tyre. So there's a, a big chance here Toyota might be caught. And they've also got to bear in mind Jimmy Pitt as well, crucially, haven't they? So uh, there is going to be that to factor in, which is going to add about 15, 16 seconds or so onto this. Uh, race distance for that team in total. Meanwhile, here a Porsche coming in a threat from Mercedes-Benz. Mercedes trying to find their way past. Aston Martin also involved. Porsche defend. Mercedes goes towards the outside. They'll have the inside line for the next left hand, the next right hander if they can follow it. They can't. Porsche do defend their position as Aston Martin very much coming into play now as well. We know how fast that V12 Vantage is in a straight line. Is he going to find his way through up the inside? Well, he's got trying the inside it. line. He's trying it. Here comes the Mercedes as well as they're going to nearly be running three wide into the chicane. This could 
could nearly end in tears, but they do all keep it relatively sensible. Oh. And the positions keep the same, but a little bit wide there on exit from Aston Martin. Bit of opposite lock for them. And you can see that Mercedes-Benz were looking to pounce very much. Bit of a myth there from Aston on Mercedes-Benz, I think. There you see the, uh, uh, the uh, Mercedes-Benz driver catching the oversteer. I think that's now Cody Lukoski in the car to the end now. So the thing is, again, Porsche corking the bottles and the medium compound of tyres, so it's going to be slow around the entirety of its lap. And both Mercedes and Aston Martin on the soft compound, look at them. Let us buy, we need to get going. But of course, Porsche has no obligation to do that. And uh, well, seeing that, Lexus now in the position they're currently in, I think they still want to stop though, would be second, but uh, still all to play for. Now, we know Mercedes and Aston, both very quick in a straight line, and we've seen Toyota make passes coming down to Arenberg. Same again, do you reckon? Well, you can see this, it's getting pretty hang uh, oh, tasty. No, Look at go. this, over the brow of the hill, in towards flag puts we go side by side. Porsche on the inside, Mercedes on the outside. Porsche holds on to track position as things stand. We look at the Mercedes with Lakovsky behind the wheel. He goes towards the outside line then into the next corner. He's got so much more pace behind the wheel on these softer tyres. It's only going to be a matter of time. They're still running side by side. Mercedes with the outside line, but track position and now taking over fifth place in this race. That was very, very important to make that pass now. So now the Mercedes-Benz has a clear path in front of them. It's hot lap until the end. That is the only way they have a chance of challenging Toyota at the head of the field. Now we're a bit mixed up in terms of pit stops right now. You can see on your screen in the graphic there, with the P column, uh, basically everyone needs to make two stops in this. So those that are front, the top four, have yet to make their last stop. So that gap will come down at the end of this lap. So Mercedes-Benz now, Tom. What can they do from here? They've got about 11 seconds or so to catch Audi. I mean, and that's, that's with a pit stop in hand. Yeah, absolutely. What do you reckon? I, I don't know. It's so difficult to call, isn't it? I mean, we know how quick Lukowski is when he's got clear track in front of him and how quick and consistent he can be as well. If he can put in the laps of his life, at this moment for the Australian, then he could be in with a good chance. But we have seen a couple of uncharacteristic errors from him here this evening Whoa. as Aston Martin sends it up the inside of Porsche and get positioned there nearly side by side. There's contact between them and Aston Martin are into the wall. Oh, that was totally unnecessary there from Porsche. I can tell you what, I can see a penalty being handed their way from race direction. 100% on the Porsche that you can't just drive into someone wants to move it. I mean, Aston, a little bit of a little bit of a send, I think it's fair to say, but the move was made, the door was open. You can't just drive into someone like that. And that's a real shame for Aston Martin. They were showing such promise there. And that's their race of their, I think their uh, opportunity for podium out the window. Got the incident under investigation. No surprise there whatsoever. Let's wait and see what the penalty will be. Let's see and piece that together here, Jimmy. So here we go. Then coming down the hill, Aston Martin sees a gap, goes up the inside. Move's made at this point. He's on Clean the outside. Just drives into the side of him. You can't just drive into the side of someone like that. What do you expect to happen? Yeah, it's so disappointing, that really. And that's uh, put pay to what was a very, very good fight. You can see a penalty there also for Audi um, for one reason or another. That must have been for exceeding track limits. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that and see why that was but this is how the point standings would be if they stayed as it is. But there's still, of course, positions to be changing and final pit stops, as we mentioned earlier on, to be made there as well. 11 seconds is the advantage nearly for Toyota now out in front, but don't forget they have got a pit and they are going to be on the slowest compound of tyre at the end of this race. Here at BMW just coming in towards the carousel, closely followed by Lexus, just a couple of seconds down the road. Three seconds, in fact, down the road are Lexus between BMW. Calling it now, Tom. Mercedes-Benz are the one to watch. They're five seconds already over Porsche after overtaking them earlier on this lap. Cody Lukowski is on a war path. He's got a clean track in front. All the guys ahead of him need to make a pit stop, and he's going to have the tyre advantage. So this manufacturer's final race, again, every time the manufacturer's, Tom, it comes to a fantastic crescendo at the end. I mean, the next lap is when we're going to find out who is going to be where. So here is Toyota right now. It's come, this is it. This You have to make the best lap of your life at this point if you're driving that Toyota coming in in the end of this lap, handing over the car, putting on the slowest compound tyre, and that falls down to Cy Bishop. He has to handle that car to the end with that hard compound tyre. Yeah, you don't envy Cy Bishop in any way, shape or form at the moment. We know how much of a good driver he is, though. Let's see whether his defensive driving is going to be up to the task, because that is what he's going to need to do with all of his might. He gives us a bit of a... Yeah, bit of a 
yeah, I'm not I don't so know. sure on that <laughs> yeah, one, we'll actually. <laughs> see. He gave me a thumbs up and then it changed to, oh, actually, I'm not sure about yeah, that. Yeah, maybe uh, not. Of course, see we have commentators down the left-hand side of your screen here as well. Yeah, of course. Uh, great to have so many different nations here. It means that uh, this isn't just an English show. It's very much a show for everyone who tunes in and pretty much echoes the, the driving is for everyone slogan at the start of GE Sports. Great to have so much accessibility, I think, for this. It certainly is. And, well, the commentators, we know, just saw a bit of a wave there from the uh, Japanese guys of uh, Nakajima-san and uh, also uh, Yamada-san there as well. Here are Team Mercedes-Benz, though. It's Lukowski running to the end. And to see a slowdown penalty being given there for Porsche, Jimmy, that was for the incident that we saw, of course, with Aston Martin. Plus two seconds that they will have to serve coming on towards the Dusty Gehur. Completely not surprised to see that. Now, this is interesting. Mercedes-Benz is now catching Audi now. Please bear in mind, that gap was about 12 seconds at the start of this lap. That's how fast Cody Lukowski is winning this car right now. I think it's a bit academic, though, Jimmy, because, uh, what, well, 1.5 seconds is penalty, so he's going to find his way past with relative ease going on towards this uh, Dusty Gehur. But regardless, that gap that he shrunk down is so impressive. Well, I was thinking that maybe he'll get a bit of a toe down the straight, but this penalty actually goes against Lukowski. He wants to try and get by as quick as possible. He should be good, though. So you see now, coming up to the penalty line, slowing down the line, filling up. When that fills up, off the throttle for 1.5 seconds, and there you go. Cody pulls out of the sip screen, and this is it now. The charge to the end. Oh, my. I'm looking forward there's to this. so much tension, isn't there? This <laughs> is going to be absolutely incredible. The fate of this Nations Cup rests on Cody Lukowski and the Mercedes-Benz team. Toyota pitting in, Toyota coming in the pit lane, then Slide Bishop gets into the car for the final stint, puts on the hard compound of tyre, I think a little bit of fuel going into that car as well for the end. Let's see where he comes out in comparison to Mercedes-Benz. Now, bear in mind, Cody, I think, is going to be behind these guys when they come out of the pit lane, but he's going to have the tyre advantage for the course, as we say around here. It's so hard to overtake, so he's got to be aggressive, it's got to be firm, and Mercedes-Benz... Well, it's going to be close, though, Jimmy. It's here. Well, here we go. It's going to be very, very close, isn't it, going down towards that first corner. Here comes Toyota, but where... Are Mercedes-Benz, are they ahead? Are they behind? Let's wait and see for a wider shot. This is close. Toyota are still ahead. They are still in the race lead by the looks of things. And yep. importantly, Mercedes-Benz are in second position and 10 seconds down the road. Now, we think the hard compound is about 13, 14 seconds slower than the soft compound of tyre. The gap is less than 10 seconds. It's all going to come down to this. Where will Cody, and I'm very sure Cody will catch Sai in the Toyota, where will he catch him? Will he be able to get by? That is the question right now. So it's all down to the Australian Australian driver, he's driven so well this weekend across all uh, tour events, a driver we think who does better at the live events he actually does in the superstar races, it's all on him right now, can he handle the pressure? Well the thing is as well, you've got to bear in mind, even if he doesn't find his way past, as soon as they get onto the Dutton Gehur, he's going to have more tracks, he's going to have a bit more straight line speed, but uh, it, it's such a tricky one isn't it, because of course then you've got the straight line speed of the Toyota, which isn't slow in a straight line either, so it's a case of, well, first of all, can Toyota defend, can Sai uh, manage to hold on to that gap it's come down quite significantly even over the our last few parts of this GP circuit Jimmy it's now down to 7.3 seconds and decreasing almost corner by corner so a second and a half already as we get through the GP circuit and more importantly this is going to be this is going to be defined on track the winner of this race will win the series here at the Nürburgring so there's only a point in it as it stands now if the race finished with Toyota in first and Mercedes in second but when those if, well, if those places I should say if they switch the Mercedes Benz will win the race and win the series. You can't ask for a better finish if we get that. I always think the winner of the last race should be the winner of the series. But anyway, here we go. Gap now down to less than seven seconds. He's here comes Cody. Yeah, he's certainly coming. He's got great pace, great consistency as well. This softer compound of tyres. There is so much tension in the air here at the Nürburgring for this World Tour manufacturer series final it is going to be so so close this oh. and we know in motorsport getting close is one thing but getting past is quite another how good is Cy Bishop's defensive driving going to be we ride in cockpit with Cody Lukowski look at the smoothness of his steering wheel that's exactly what he needs to be on this softer compound of tyres they're going to be pretty second hand by the end of this lap however he is doing a really good job of holding on to uh, this track position so far and also decreasing that gap down, just being smooth and trying to keep that tyre life as much up as possible. Regardless of what happens uh, in this race, it's been an absolutely great recovery from Mercedes-Benz after that first race at St. Croix where Valverde uh, found himself off the circuit and down the order. A great race at Monza and now maybe finished off here by Cody Lukowski at the Nordschleife. We have about half a lap to go here, and it's anybody's game. The gap down to 5.4 seconds. It won't be long until we can see Sly Bishop in the Toyota up the road. Let's see if we can see him coming down the hill to compression. There he is, just going off in the distance, and for the first time in most of this race, 
Cody can now see the car in front of him. That's just going to give him extra motivation. It certainly, certainly is. Well, this is very, very close, very tension-filled. Toyota there with Cy Bishop, the Kiwi at the wheel, defending for all of his might. They're in the same shot now. It's closed down. It's now less than 4.7 seconds almost between these two drivers, between these two manufacturers. The winner on the road will be the winner of this Manufacturer Series final here tonight in the World Tour, going through into the left-hander, just over uh, three-quarters of a lap to go here at this Nordschleife circuit I tell you what this is going to be absolutely nail-biting and it's just decreasing look he's pulled in half a second over the last three corners Jimmy Heslikovsky so much I, I'd rather be the hunter than the hunted at this point you see the, the, the rings are right together. next to each other I love that yeah they're right next to each other in the rings as well probably not even daring to set a glance over at the monitor very much focused on what they're doing it's been an absolutely fantastic race from Toyota and Yamanaka uh, and uh, Ken Willem to put the car in this position, but now it's just a fist fight on the circuit, and it's between Cy Bishop and Cody that cost the gap now down to three and a half seconds and decreasing all the time. That Mercedes Benz is very quick in the straight line as well, so it's gaining in the straights and in the corners. But I don't think it's going to be close enough to pass, maybe before the Dot and Her. But bear in mind, when we get there, it's just a chess game. It really is, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's position, you don't want to be in the position where you're having to defend going onto that Dotting Hill, but then in another respect you do because you'll have the slipstream of the guy who gets past you. So it's now down to under three seconds. And as we know, Lukowski has got great pace. We know he's done some audacious moves. That move around the outside that we saw just a couple of laps ago. This is tantalizing, this is close, and this is unpredictable. It is what Gran Turismo and these World Tour events is all about. As Jimmy said earlier on, the winner on the road will be the winner of this Manufacturer Series final. It's Sidoc who is defending. It's BMW, sorry, Mercedes-Benz rather, in second position with Lukowski at the wheel who are challenging for this race lead. A great job as well for BMW in that final podium position and also Ford there as well and Lexus who have recovered uh, what has been a difficult evening for them inside the top five don't forget about Aston Martin they've been pretty much nowhere but after a good third race they are now up inside the top seven I tell you what if you're online right now go share this out this is coming down to the last lap on the last race for race victory here all the guys here live at the Ring Boulevard come over to the Gran Turismo stand this is going to be a very exciting finish it'll be a big shame if you missed it the gap now only down to 1.8 seconds is nearly within the drafting range at this point coming into the last sector this is where we've said so many times where a tower advantage will really help you over your competitor now look at Cody he is leaving nothing on the table from curb to curb there here's a man who knows the car and track at like the back of his hand and now putting up up to the back of Toyota in front. Cy Bishop, all he can do is drive as hard as he can. And please don't think that Cy Bishop isn't trying because on those hard compounder tyres, the car is a lot slower than when it's on soft. He's doing a great job keeping it on track right now, but it's just seeing He's closer and closer every passing second, Tom. Well, regardless of what happens, this has been a great race from both teams. Lakowski, Williams and Valverde with the Mercedes-Benz, Kevilham, Yamanaka and Cy Bishop, who is now behind the wheel of the Toyota. Both teams have driven to perfection. They have not put a foot wrong. And the tension that this is creating coming down to the final lap and coming down to the Dottinger Hur, unless a mistake is forced by either driver, it is surely going to come down to a slipstream battle on the final lap here at the Nürburgring. So here we go then. Moment of truth coming up. Toyota have about six tenths of a second lead. It's not going to be enough to pull away on the straight. Cody has gone from being 10 seconds behind at the start of his lap to now being within touching distance of Toyota. Coming round the corner before the second carousel. Exit out of here is very important for your run onto the Dot and Jehoa. Both cars out of there very nicely. Cody on the front of the bit sooner there, using the grip of the tyre. And now coming around the long right-hander. And this is it. This is all what it's all, all come down to. Four races this entire weekend, all the shows before this. Here it is now, a straight fight between first and second, down the back straight, Cody in the slipstream. He's going to go defensive, you can see that, but here comes Cody. Is he going to be able to try and find a way past? He's not reading him as close as he would like. This straight is actually very short in these Group 3 cars, but that Toyota has got great legs on it. Is Lukowski going to be able to do anything? A look over from Cy Bishop, but Lukowski, he's maxed out. He's got no more straight line speed. He's going to have to try something. He's going to have to think about a lunge, surely, into the left-hander. That's brilliant. Here comes Lukowski, they're side by side. This is amazing for the Manufacturer Series final win. Lukowski on the inside, Bishop 
on the outside is the Toyota. Oh, he goes on. They're side by side still. And Toyota and Side Bishop take victory here in the Manufacturers Series final. Well, that is going to go down surely to a Stewart's investigation. But Toyota win it on the road here for the Manufacturers Series grand final. Mercedes-Benz come home in second position after contact in the final sector. And BMW claim a well-deserved podium there in third place. But Lakowski, I tell you what, he was very, very disappointed with that. And absolutely no surprise at all, Jimmy. Investigation for that. Under incident. investigation is what I'm hearing in my headset right now. So that result is not final. Side Bishop still celebrating with his Toyota teammates, in my opinion. I think it's fair. I think they were just hard racing. Mercedes found themselves on the outside, and the Toyota is always going to track out, but we only saw it from one angle. The stewards get to see it from a couple of different angles, but that result is not final. But regardless, what a conclusion, man. What a conclusion to that. Fantastic.